So yeah. firstly, you're just going to go back. Yeah, yeah you're going to go yeah. back to here yeah. and then come in. Join web, yeah. There. Okay. So, oh, dear, it's right. Bring him up. Whoa. The strange thing about the novel, of course, is that it opens with the devil arriving in Moscow. So you have the whole theme of the supernatural. And then the questions just simply begin. Is he really the devil? Does Bulgakov, is, when the devil talks, tells the story of Jesus Christ? That's to say Yeshua HaNosri and Pilate. Does he... Imagine if there are religious content to it, um, just as in Goethe's Faust, um, when Gretchen says to Faust, are you religious? And it's the Gretchen question that's famous in all of Germany. But the piece is not about religion. What it's about, very simply, is about stories and the telling of stories, and the power of stories. It's a trance, it's right down everything, it's quiet here. Show down! <laughs> <laughs> Do we believe in the devil? Do we believe that people actually fly through the air? Do we believe in spirits and the crazy things that happen? Well, of course we do, because we're reading a story, and anything can happen in a story. Ah, but we say that doesn't happen in reality. But in this story of the numinous, we're not asked to believe in the numinous, but to make the story of the numinous reflect on the life of Moscow, Soviet Russia at the time. A year ago, I, uh, I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote a novel about Pontius Pilate. You are right? No. No, I... I'm a master. You know, it's so unlikely in some ways. From the outside, it probably seems a bit unlikely, but I find enormous um, protection from Simon. It's a compositional piece and it's made, it's composed of all the fragments that grow up through the rehearsal process. And at the heart of this is the possession of the master that Paul Rees has taken on. I was a historian, I was a translator from all that, or English, French, German, Latin, Greek, a little Spanish. Imagine my astonishment, I I fished the ticket out of my pocket and I saw that I had the winning number. Ticket? Well, I won a hundred thousand rubles in the lottery. I was free! The character of the master, as it appears in the book, um, is reduced to these fragmentary moments. And for me, my desire always was for somebody who could take a moment and make it seem like an eternity, make it seem more alive than it's possible to imagine. And um, Paul's extraordinary gift is to bring a psychological and physical reality to the people that he plays on stage. I remember exactly how a voice sounded. It was, it was pitched quite low with a catch in it. Do you like my flowers? No. Don't you like flowers then? Yes, yes, I, I like flowers, have you not though? What kind do you like? Roses. I like roses. I knew if I brought flowers, you'd have to find me. <laughs> what if I hadn't? Uh, I would have killed myself. Stop there. <laughs> That's every experience, you know? I think the process of doing this has been interesting because we were four months really just looking at the book and improvising from the book, but never leaving the book. 
Never. I don't think there's a single beat in this production that Bulgakov would not approve of in relation to his book. Veronica? Oh, the hell, Veronica is not in the bureau. Don't play the fool, Veronica. Listen, are you thinking of going to the police with those telegrams? Who is this? Don't take them anywhere and don't show them to anybody. Who is this? I'll have you arrested. Do I make myself clear? Nobody is to see them. You will pay for this. Who is this? Who is this? The great quality of the Master Margarita is that the questions that it throws out, up about the nature of storytelling and the nature of fiction apply to all time. So the question of what we believe to be real or not real, or what is a true story and not a true story, is perhaps more apposite today than it has ever been. Today is an age where we believe so fervently in the, in, in the narrative that we're fed, the narrative of mass consumer capitalism, the narrative of, uh, of, of advertising, the narrative of the government, the narrative of the way that we believe that we need a, an austerity package now, even though there are more people who are richer than have ever been in any time in history, and nothing is said about that. At that moment, his office began to darken. Veronica ran out, slammed the door behind him, and went out into the garden via the side door. He was in a hurry, although he was in a hurry, an irresistible urge made him turn aside for a second into the open air men's toilet just to check that the electrician had replaced a faulty electric lamp. Veronica! So this questioning of the dominant narrative of our time, which is after all what uh, Bulgakov is doing in The Master of Margarita, is more appropriate than has ever been.